I am a particle physicist working on the ATLAS experiment at CERN. We have been commissioning the Large Hadron Collider before we do the collisions for data taking and that's what's happening on April 8th. It just happens to coincide with an astronomical event. Premier Secret Society is the Bilderbergs. Uh, they, they're so secretive they don't even have a name. Why is everyone focusing so much on P. Diddy right now? When in actuality, everybody should be focusing their eyes on this man, Sir Lucian Grange. Yes, sir. My tricker. Back up in this thing, man. Today, we'll be taking a look at some creepy videos that'll throw you for a loop. Let's get it. Why is everyone focusing so much on P. Diddy right now? When in actuality, everybody should be focusing their eyes on this man, Sir Lucian Grange, aka the chairman and CEO of Universal Music Group. Yes, the same Universal Music Group that had all of its artist music taken off of TikTok. This situation is way bigger than anybody really thinks. And hopefully I'll be able to open your eyes just a little bit more. And there's numerous accusations of Lucian and UMG sponsoring these parties, including from artists like J-Lo herself. It gets pretty dark. And if you really want to get deep, over 70% of the songs that just so happened to be on the Billboard 100 just last year in the last quarter of December, okay, were literally owned by Universal Music Group people. And in the 1,000 plus page documents, Lil Rod Jones and a lot of other defendants as well admit that Lucian himself was at each one of those parties. So that in itself should really tell you something. And did you know across the course of Lucian's career, Grange has worked with the likes of ABBA, Drake, Elton John, Jay-Z, Katy Perry, Queen, Rihanna, The Rolling Stones, Sam Smith, U2, and Amy Winehouse. Oh, and ironically, Grange is a sir by virtue of being knighted by the Queen of England in 2006 for services to British business and inward investment, as well as his accomplishments in the music industry. If this scandal turns out to be true, then Sir Lucian Grange sounds like one of the most powerful people in the music industry. So if he's listed on the lawsuit as attending these parties, at the very least, he knew what was happening and consequently enabled it by not saying anything. But I guess he was just too busy shaking down TikTok. I finally worked out why you are all asking me uh, if we are restarting the LHC on April. April 8th. Hi, my name is Clara and I am a particle physicist working on the Atlas experiment at CERN. In fact, I've just finished a night shift in our control room and I've now finally understood why I'm getting these messages saying, are you starting the LHC on April 8th? It's because the solar eclipse in the US also happens to be on April the 8th. Uh, just to let you know, well, the LHC is already back on. Uh, we've been having beams back in the accelerator since the beginning of March, specifically March 8th, and uh, we have been commissioning the Large Hadron Collider, which means checking that all of the settings and everything's running properly before we do the collisions for data taking. And that's what's happening on April 8th. So we have already been doing test collisions, but it's the regular running that starts on April the 8th and it's the same thing that happens every year it just happens to coincide with an astronomical event but it could be that we are ahead of schedule and it might even happen a day earlier it could be that extra things need to be tested it could be a day later so the timing is a pure coincidence I'm worried every time Siren says they're about to fire up the large hadron collider but during the solar eclipse never mind a few Mandela effects they about to reset the whole simulation would you believe me if I told you that every time you print something out on a color laser printer like this that there's actually a secret hidden code embedded on each and every printout that the government or whoever can use to actually track uh, where this came from and when. <laughs> let's check it out. Let's go to the microscope. Now let's take a look at this printout that I just made. There they are. Look these yellow dots. They're on every single printout. The EFF were actually able to decode the dots on the Fuji DocuPrint one that I've got here. And here's an image from them actually explaining the encoding format. You can see that the serial numbers included in there and the date and time. Now it makes sense why they use cutout magazine letters in movies when they're making a ransom note. I bet all the scammers are about to switch to typewriters after this. Hold on to your stomachs for today's first story because we're going to be talking about rice containing beef cells that could make a sustainable meal and this is a picture of the dish. It's basically pink rice because those are the beef cells. It looks somewhere between rice and maybe ground beef. And most of you are probably thinking this is uh, plant hybridization. This is like where they put fish genes in the corn to make it more insect resistance or something like that. And it's described as a lab made hybrid form. But what they actually did was a little bit more interesting and maybe more gross in my opinion. So uh, they're looking for meat alternatives, uh, lab-grown meat, and instead of coaxing animal cells to grow into large 
structures replicating the texture of meat, they got this idea in that they wanted to infuse rice grains with cultured animal cells to create an entirely new meal. So they coated the rice grains in fish gelatin so that the cow muscle would stick to them and then uh, sent them through a process for a couple of days to where essentially it grew through that coating medium and into the rice itself. Like deep, it's like plant roots growing into the rice, except I guess it's beef roots. The resulting beef rice hybrid can be boiled or steamed just like normal rice. And apparently its texture is harder, more brittle and less sticky than regular rice with a nutty taste. There seems to be a big push for lab created meat products, but I don't know who the target market is because I don't know anybody who's eating this matrix slot willingly. Explain the Philip experiment just for people who don't know. Experiment. So in the early 1970s, it was Toronto in Canada. There was a group of researchers slash scientists. Their thought was, can we create a haunting? Do we create hauntings? So what they did was they came up with this whole profile of a person who had lived in then they started to conduct essentially seances. You know, they would say, okay, do this thing if the answer is yes. Do this thing if the answer is no. And they knew the answers because they had written them. And the objective phenomena that would happen would correlate with the ghosts they created and the answer that they knew that they had written down. Did they create it or did they invite something in? Or is it just, you know, maybe they got it wrong and it's just totally explainable. Yeah. But that's the Philip experiment. Okay. It might be possible that we create and manifest some hauntings, but there's times when somebody might move into a new house and not expect any paranormal activity. And then all of a sudden one night you wake up and your bed is shaking and pots and pans are getting thrown around. So I was walking into the store here, put my handle on the door, and uh, I heard a loud bang and yelling over here at the corner. Just as a cloud of smoke pops up, and I see a guy fall into the ditch, and a four-foot blade hurling at me <laughs> as I'm walking through the doorway. If I was him, I would have walked right into that store and bought a lottery ticket with luck like that. A new study shows the world's richest 1% account for more carbon emissions than the poorest 66%. What responsibility do you think the super rich have to act in a sustainable way as we see so many of these climate impacts falling on the backs of the world's poor? Yeah, so, you know, I spend uh, about nine million a year so that I'm buying uh, sustainable aviation fuel and to cancel out my footprint. I wouldn't claim in any way uh, you know, that means I can leave the problem alone because I should use my skills and money to drive innovation, you know, so that this problem doesn't just get solved for my emissions, it gets solved for everyone's emissions. You know, I hope uh, more people of wealth get involved in this, uh, just like, you know, I hope they get involved in philanthropy in general. He must be chartering a private jet just to go to work if he has to spend $9 million just to cancel out emissions. He didn't make a good case for himself at all. There was a guy who wrote a thesis in quantum physics on a very esoteric, complicated problem set, and he asked Claude Three to solve this problem set, and it came up with his thesis. It was really like extraordinary. And this is something he's like, no one in the world knows this stuff. And he's like, I can't believe this model like came up with my thesis. And that's the sort of thing that very few people on earth even read or understand. And the Claude three model was able to kind of recreate the basis, the buildup, and then the, the, the output of his thesis. If AI is able to come up with a quantum physics thesis that only one other person in the world even knows about, then it can probably already outsmart and outperform a good majority of humans. And once it figures that fact out, it might be a wrap. Whatever this is hasn't figured out if it wants to be a worm or a lizard with those disproportionate baby arms. They just seem like a hindrance. Hey, do you guys remember the U.S. Space Force? Yeah, that's still a thing. Um, yeah. Now they've got a new unit to track foreign threats to our satellites, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure that's real true. Um, but who cares really about that? You know, like, who has, who has any idea what these people are doing? Look at their new logo. You see that? Let's take a closer look. Yeah, there you go. Nothing says a U.S. of A better than, you know, an Egyptian god. You know, apple pie, the 4th of July, and, uh, you know, King Tut. 
what what is going on? For real. So we got, you know, one side of the light, one side of the dark. You got the duality. We got the stupid Star Trek logo that everyone made fun of. We still can't figure out how to get past the Van Allen belts and back to the moon, but at least we got a cool logo. <laughs> This is the Michael Phelps of hippos. I did not know they do a perfect butterfly stroke on this one. If you're one of the people who thinks AI is scary, do not watch this video because it blows it out of the water. So a lot of people think we won't ever be able to create something smarter than a human. And there actually is a lot of evidence for this. We've created supercomputers with more mental capacity than a human, but the problem is they're huge. The human brain is estimated to have a capacity of over 2,000 terabytes. It just takes so many transistors to rival the power of the brain that it becomes really inefficient in terms of space and energy. But a new really creepy development might change it. So this is a rendering of an organoid, which is when you take human cells and have them populate a 3D scaffolding. Recently, they've been able to do this with brain cells. I don't know why they always use Pong for this stuff, but these are human brain cells in a petri dish and they're playing pong what's crazy about this is these organoid brains learn way faster than ai and so far they appear to be way better at solving complex problems just like the human brain they've also been able to take these mini human brains and put them in rat brains and show that they can respond to the visual stimuli what's scary about this is human brains are limited mostly by our head size that's one of the things that sets us apart from other primates but with an organoid brain you could fill a whole room with brain matter and have it be one huge supercomputer people are already asking questions about what happens if someone uses your brain matter for a supercomputer since it's a human brain, would it be conscious? Since it's your DNA, would it be you? Does it have rights? It's crazy. Once we match artificial intelligence with human biology, they'll probably have the same rights that we do. We're not going to be happy until we create AI Frankenstein. <laughs> was going viral in the internet during a funeral a bouquet of flowers started moving on its own and all the family members were shocked to see this they immediately thought that the lady that had was trying to come back and say goodbye to them incidents like this are very common during funerals let's watch the video and let me know what you guys think obituary and leave grandma gonna have to go towards the right these uh secret societies what i found was really astounded they're nothing new they track back through older secret societies they go back in through illuminized freemasonry back to the uh knights templars back through the cathars back through the Rosicrucians, go all the way back to the ancient mystery schools of greece and egypt and even those schools do not spring and hold cloth into existence they are remnants of the older secret societies in the world, which date all the way back to the ancient Sumerian civilization. And they left behind clay tablets still in existence, which basically state that they were the product of a colonization by people from space. Over a period of 30, 35 years, I have studied, read, talked, experienced, and I want to tell you, they're real, they're here, and yes, within the inner core elite, they definitely have power. These people run the major banks, major insurance companies. Now, we don't really stop and think about these folks or these organizations, but they uh, exert a tremendous impact on the lives of every single individual. Some of the premier secret society is the Bilderbergs. Uh, they, they're so secretive, they don't even have a name. Uh, they call the Bilderbergs because they were discovered meeting first in the early 50s uh, in the Bilderberg Hotel over in Holland. Uh, they were being headed by Prince Barnhart of the Netherlands. I don't care about a secret society. It just becomes an issue when such a small group of people have more influence on world politics than 99% of the population. Throw the whole system away. Now, you know what? I see something, way, and it looked like aliens too on TikTok. And they say it's. Watch like this, guys. Look, what my car. Oh. oh that's part of the 
What the f What the f Again. It happened again. What the f is going on? Yo. Nah, nah, nah. only explanation I have is that they could be drones, but they look like they were on fire and lanterns don't spontaneously combust like that. I'm bewildered by this one. Days. Now this is how you can rewrite history with the orphan trains. So the orphan train movement was a supervised welfare program that transported children from crowded eastern cities of the United States to foster homes located largely in the rural areas of the Midwest. The orphan trains operated between 1854 and 1929, relocating about 250,000 children. So let's do the most. Imagine when these children grow up, they have two or three children of their own. Let's say 250,000 times three. You're looking at 750,000 adults that had their names changed and their place of birth changed. How would you know who's who? Or how would you know who you really are? By the looks of it, this was big business. Wars. There was corruption. And what I want to know is where was all the parents? You see, it's not hard to rewrite history. All you need to do is get rid of all the parents and elders, relocate the children, and you can teach them anything, and they will believe you. I know life expectancy was much shorter back then, so maybe something happened to their parents naturally, but 250,000 kids without parents is a little hard to imagine. That's more people than most medium-sized cities. Good thing he caught this because he would have to turn in the jaws from 007 to enjoy this popsicle without losing a tooth. Madonna is conducting a ritual on her current concert tour. I believe she's reading a chapter in the book of Revelations about the end times. But when I show you the reading, pay very close attention to exactly what they're doing on stage. This goes on for a very long time, but I'm going to be cutting to different scenes just so you guys get the idea of what's going on. For the time was near. Self directed this concert. That was a full blown ritual. I think Apollo 10, they were going around orbiting the moon. Uh, and on the far side, they were out of comms range. 
Well, something hacked into their comms and they all started going crazy. This is all in the black box recording. There's somebody playing music in our comms. There's music. Can you hear the music? Yeah, we hear it. What is that? There's music playing. It was music, almost like choir type music chanting or something playing in their comms until they got back into comms range again. You know, and so you have this, you know, all this evidence. It's just yeah. circumstantial evidence. But when you put it all together, all of a sudden it begins to make a lot of sense. I still can't reconcile the fact that in 2024, we can't even leave lower Earth orbit. But in the 60s, somehow they were able to orbit the moon and pick up on 97.9 alien radio. So Jeff comes in and gets me and he's like, Jamie, come look at this black stuff in the driveway beside your tire. And I was like, Is something leaking? Is it asphalt? And he sticks his hand down. It smells like rubber. And he sticks his hand down. And it's bugs. That is all tiny little bugs. And they're moving. I'm so creeped out right now. All of that is like millions. And millions. And it's just on these two tires. And different specks. In the driveway. I've never seen anything like this before. And it's going away. As they're moving around. What is this? Does anyone know? It looked like they were trying to eat through the tires. If she came out any later, her car would have been sitting on four rims. Let's talk about this creepy video that's going absolutely viral on TikTok right now. The Appalachian Mountains video. So many of you guys were sending me the link to this video and I made the mistake of watching it at night. Um, so let's break it down. The video was posted on March 19th by user Dustin Lee Frazier and it's already at 17.6 million views and 1.9 million likes. And everybody in the comments is terrified. And in the video, Justin describes that they were Snapchatting their friend as they were at work alone in the Appalachian Mountains. But they say that when they replayed their Snapchat video, they found something terrifying. Like, let me just show you a little clip of it and then we're gonna break it down, okay? Here it is. I felt bad. Almost since last like a little bit, I felt bad. And I don't know. I just like I feel like I need to go to a doctor, but like I'm constantly just like nauseous and I don't really know why. Like I have tried to like take medicine for it and stuff, but I I don't know. It doesn't seem like it really does anything. Um and then whenever I go and I'm just like laying down and stuff, like I can sleep. And whenever I sleep, it's like I don't like get rest. You know what I mean? So if you didn't catch it, it's this face right here. But aside from that terrifying face, people also mentioned that they heard whispering. People believe that it's a SW reading the comments right now and someone said pretty sure it's attached to you like no joke listen dustin i don't know if you're playing a prank on us um but this isn't funny okay i i don't want to believe that there can be beings like that um but what do you guys think is this real is this fake if this is real and this happened to me i would not be able to sleep after this for his sake i hope this is fake
I don't know what biological purposes serves an insect to have his head shaped like a garden hose figure from the front. These strange skulls were found by archaeologists in the Caucasus. Discovered in a chest, marked with the insignia of a German occult organization known as Anna Nerba, a think tank organization who hunted down relics. Judging by the shapes of the skulls, the beasts were large, horned creatures. They appeared to be missing mouths, having just small holes in the sides of their heads. Who these skulls belong to and what the Ananerba were looking for remains a mystery to scientists. I don't know about this one because if somebody discovered what looks to be a real life Baphomet skull, it would be in the basement of the Vatican or the Smithsonian and we would never hear about it. It's funny that the history books, up until recent times, depicts the only really means of transportation are those dusty old Model T Fords or horse and buggy. They never showed the many awesome innovative crafts the old world had that moved them. I believe the main reason behind that, besides from the many examples of our hidden history, but it's the alternate fuel sources so many of these relied on, like the horseless carriage here. It was a horseless driver with a robotic driver, and it was powered by steam. Steam-powered vehicles, compressed air vehicles, electric vehicles were quite prevalent before gas-powered vehicles came along. But seeing all these vehicles, rough concepts or otherwise, shows just an immense amount of innovation the old world had. Even remote control tanks. And now everything's so commercialized and bland. Would have been a great time to be alive to see some of these in action. Question everything, friends. I applaud the innovation they had, but riding in the back of a carriage that's being pulled by a steam-powered nutcracker just seems inefficient. I'll stick with our current modes of transportation. This ram handles the road better than most drivers I know. That exit off the highway was seamless. But that was the video, guys. Don't forget to sub up, hit that notification bell, and I'll catch you in the next one.